every time I bring him on here, he burps. Oh, thank you. Thank you so much. See, that Scandinavia stuff even lasts through dog kisses. Hey guys, what's going on? If you're new here, welcome. My name is Brittany Nicole, and today we are doing my everyday makeup routine. So I'm gonna throw a huge disclaimer up here. I don't wear makeup every day, okay? I said it. I wear makeup once, maybe twice a week, and most of the time it's when I'm doing a YouTube video or I have a work meeting and I need to look presentable. So when I say everyday makeup, I mean my makeup that I throw on when I need to look presentable, so I'm not throwing glitter on the eyes. I'm not putting on false lashes. I'm not throwing on a matte red lip. You know what I mean? This is just the makeup I go to. It's reliable. I've been using it for a very long time that I know will last me all day, and I think you guys will love it as well. So if you are interested in seeing my go-to everyday makeup products, go ahead and keep watching. Hi, bud. Tell me Theo does not look like the Grinch. I look at him when he's furry. A lot of times I get him shaved, but when he's furry, he reminds me so much of the Grinch when he was like a little kid. You know what I mean? Couple things I wanna just kinda lay out here since I've gotten a lot more subscribers and a lot more viewers since my Tati video. One, yes I repeat myself. I am someone who learns through repetition, so of course I'm gonna educate the way I learn. I try to keep my videos a lot more educational based rather than just talking at you guys. So. Please feel free to fast forward or even click off the video rather than tell me I talk too much or you don't want to watch me because of that. No one's forcing you to watch me. So there's that. And two, one idea often forms into another idea. So I'm going to repeat myself if they're kind of interconnected. And three, I would rather over educate than under educate. And you can just kind of pick and choose what you need. So wanted to lay that out there before we got into this video so let me just quickly talk to you about my skin right now it is the dead of winter in chicago it's been like 10 degrees it's freezing and i have to take my dog out and i have to live my life so my skin is kind of dry it's it's almost like wind burned right now so i've been really kind of focusing on more hydrating products. I did already put on my primer. I went in with my ColourPop Pretty Fresh Hydrating Hyaluronic Acid Primer. Really like this for hydration. However, it doesn't make my makeup last all day, so I have to go in with more of like a gripping primer. So I went in with my Dermablend Instagrip Jelly Primer in pretty much the center of my face because that's where my makeup tends to come off first, and then I use the ColourPop on the perimeter of my face. So if you guys don't have the same skin as me, tailor whatever you guys use to prep your skin to what works for you. So feel free to tailor your primers, your foundations, your concealers to whatever works for you. Always keep that in mind when you're watching on YouTube. What works for an influencer might not work for you. So if you have more oily skin, using the ColourPop Hydrating Primer is probably not going to be best for you. You might be better off going in with something like the Catrice Prime and Fine or like the Smashbox Oil Blocking Primers, anything like that. Same thing when it comes to foundation, which is next. I did let both of these primers sit in for about 10, 15 minutes. I like to let my primers really set in and do their magic before going in with the foundation. So I do that. If I'm in a rush in the morning, I'm not gonna do that. I'm just gonna throw it on my face. Usually I won't even use a primer, to be honest. I'll just go in with my Embryo Lease moisturizer, which really works well as a primer. Let that sit in for five minutes and go right into the foundation. But I had the time today, so I went ahead and did it. So next up for me is foundation. I've fallen head over heels for the NYX Born to Glow foundation. This is in the shade Nude. It's a touch too dark for me, but it works really well once I blend it out. This is such a full coverage foundation. When you use a brush, you do not need a lot here. That's why I love it. I can get it on my face and get out the door super fast. Obviously, very, very glowy foundation here. So again, if you're more on the oily side, feel free to change this up with a matte foundation. Another one I really, really love is the L'Oreal Infallible Up to 24 Hour Fresh Wear. This is a little more like skin-like, kind of a satin-like finish. So this would be a good option for really whatever kind of skin you have. I find this works when I'm dry and it also works on my oily friends who I've recommended that to. But I'm gonna go in with the NYX Born to Glow and I'm using that on my Sigma Flat Kabuki F80. I do have a coupon code with Sigma 
feels excited about it if you just heard a meow i really really like this as a foundation brush this is one of my absolute favorites it pretty much is my go-to i always use a sponge after i put on my foundation as well this is my aoa studio Paw Paw Brush. This is $1.55, but I will leave the code for Sigma down below. It's just Brittany Nicole. So I just put a touch of that on the back of my hand, and that will probably be more than enough for my entire face. If you're using a brush, I like the coverage a lot better with this one with a brush. I don't need to go in and make it look like I have a mask on. If I did that and went into a work meeting, personally, people would probably be like, whoa girl, you know what I mean? But do whatever you're comfortable with and tailor it to whatever you've got going on. If I was wearing this like out with my friends for a night out or something like that or brunch, I might go in with a little more foundation and not mind it. But today, since this is every day, we're just gonna do a nice, light, even layer. The thing I really like about this brush is you can swipe it and then swirl it and kind of pat it and it just makes the finish so nice. I never have brush strokes with this one. A lot of times when I'm going in with brushes, I get brush strokes, not with this one. I do always go over it, like I said, with the sponge, but this just really gets the makeup on your face super fast. So that is it as far as coverage. I do want to also mention with the NYX foundation and the L'Oreal, if you struggle with keeping foundation on your nose, both of these work so well for me. Lots of foundations for me go on and look extremely extremely patchy on my nose for some reason these two foundations don't do that which is why they're my go-to's i choose these over any high-end foundation i've ever used so i always put just a dot more on the back of my hand before i go in with my sponge and i just kind of layer that onto the sponge so there's a little bit of a barrier so it's not going to kind of soak up too much product on the skin if you did go in with too much foundation by accident, I wouldn't do this. I would just go right in with a damp sponge. That way it's gonna pick up any of the excess product, but if you don't want it to take away any products, go ahead and put a little bit of like a barrier between the sponge and your face and you'll see that it's not gonna soak up product. So that is all I'm gonna do as far as foundation. Nice, even layer, super comfortable, doesn't feel like I have anything on my face. My skin is evened out, but it doesn't look like I have a mask on, which is exactly what I'm going for. So next up is concealer. You guys know if you've been with me for a while. Too Faced Born This Way Multi-Use Sculpting Concealer in Vanilla is my absolute favorite. No concealer compares to this for me. It's the most hydrating concealer for under my eyes. It is the best coverage. It doesn't look cakey and I'm obsessed with it. So I'm just gonna go in with a little bit of that. I also don't go like crazy heavy with my concealer. That's all I'm gonna do and that might even be too much. So I'll blend it down a little bit onto the cheeks as well. I never understand how people can wear so much concealer and it doesn't look cakey throughout the day. I have the most finicky under eyes in the world, but again, that goes back to kind of skin type and texture and all that good stuff. But when I go in, cat hair, shocker, when I go in with a bunch of concealer, it just ends up looking like a cakey mess. So I always try to kind of avoid the under eye area with my foundation because if I get like even the slightest bit too much product under there, it ends up looking cakey. So that takes like no time to blend out and just looks so good. So you can see there's still a little bit of darkness there, but I'm not going to worry about that for the day to day. If I go in with more product, it's just going to look too cakey and I'd rather have a little bit of the you know, blue and purple tone show through then look super cakey under my eyes. I also avoid the nose area personally with my concealer because again, I have like dryness and texture on my nose that doesn't hold foundation well and it certainly doesn't hold concealer well. There's no concealer I found that goes over my nose well so I completely avoid that area. I find rather than piling on foundation or concealer on the nose if you're drier or if you have texture or like redness on your nose like I do is a lot better than trying to layer on the products to cover it up because then it just looks like a cakey mess on my nose especially. So if you're struggling with that, try to use less product on the nose than more product. I know some people recommend going in with like concealer first and then foundation. I would just recommend going very, very lightly over the nose and then you have a nice kind of even 
texture on the nose rather than super cakey, super full coverage. So I'm gonna go in and set the under eyes now. I really love the Ilia Fade Into You Soft Focus Finishing Powder. This has been the best powder I've used in a long time. I only go in with the slightest bit here. I don't want to bake. I just really want to make sure I don't get excessive creasing. So I always go in and I look up and I try to stay looking up, which can be kind of a challenge when you're trying to dip into a powder like I'm gonna have to look down right now to grab it but I try my best to look up and I just grab minimal product and then I look up so I kind of look kind of creepy you know what I mean I'm looking up so I'm not like forming any creases because when you're looking down creases are gonna form and then I just gently push that into the skin and then I'll bring it down right next to the nose area I hope to God that's focusing on me and not the compact. When you're a one woman show here and you don't have like a cameraman behind the camera, things don't always go to plan. But that is all I do and it looks super beautiful and airbrushed under there. Highly, highly recommend trying out that product. It's from Sephora, it's amazing and it's clean. And then I just recently started doing this and I really like it. I take my Charlotte Tilbury Airbrush Finish number one, very long name. This is such a beautiful powder. It has very minimal coverage but it just kind of makes everything you put on top of it really, really easy to blend. So I take a very fluffy brush. This is an Urban Studio Powder 181 brush. This is from like Marshalls. And I just dip a little bit in there. I don't want any coverage here. I just wanna make sure everything goes on smoothly. So I really lightly just kind of touch over any area of my face that I haven't set already. So down the neck, because a lot of times I'm wearing a turtleneck in the winter to stay warm and just lightly around the face. All right, so I know this seems like it's a lot of steps and it's taking a long time, but that's because I'm really taking the time to explain to you guys why I do this. If I'm doing this by myself, it takes 10, 15 minutes flat. So next up, I go in with bronzer. Everybody has a different routine. Some people might do brows first. Some people might do highlight first. Some people might do blush first. Do whatever works for you. This is just what works for me. And I've been loving two bronzers. I know it's excessive, but I just think it's so pretty. So I go in with my L'Oreal True Match Lumi Bronze. This is in 01. And then I go in with my bronzer from the Chloe Malika palette. I think this is the Chloe one. I wish they still sold this because this is so beautiful. Every time I think about buying the Hourglass, which I really want to, the ambient light sets, I think about this palette and how much I love it and that I don't need that. But when I run out of this, I might eventually go into that. So I just take my Japanesque brush. This is the 716, that's all it says. And I dip first into the L'Oreal and then I lightly dip into the Chloe bronzer and I'm just gonna go in and bronze. So I really like these because it just gives a really natural bronze to the face. You're not going in and looking like you've been in the tropics or anything like that. And don't get me wrong, I do spray tan in the winter and I freaking love it. But when I don't have anything on, this looks most flattering for me. And I find that these both blend perfectly together. So I've just been really enjoying this palette. Especially the Chloe one because I then go in and I use the bron the blush rather from the palette and the highlight and it's all in one palette and they all blend beautifully. So I love that palette is basically what I'm trying to say. Do you guys have one side that you like better? This is like my good side and this is my troublesome side. Like with everything, eye, face, bone structure, I don't know what it is and this is my right handed side which usually people like more. This is my left handed side and I just think it's a little more aesthetically pleasing. Let me know what your favorite side is down below. So after I go in and do any step, so bronzer, blush, highlight, unless I'm in a super, super rush, I'll go in and just blend the edges. This is really nice hair, Brittany. I'll go in and blend the edges with my sponge. I don't run into any problem with it getting patchy. And unless your sponge is like super wet, which it shouldn't be, it should just, you know, be lightly damp. You shouldn't have any problem and this just like makes everything blend and look like it's coming from within. Next up, like I said, we're using the blush in the palette. These do have a bit of a sheen to it. This is also a Japanese brush. This is the 722 brush. I love the angle of this. It's absolutely perfect for my kind of cheek shape. It just hugs my cheek perfectly. Love angled brushes for that. But 
They do have a sheen to it, but again, I just think that's so pretty and looks super natural, especially in the winter for me when my skin's a little more dry. I find that this kind of makes me look a little more healthy. So love this, and I pretty much apply it in the like back of the cheek area. I find that that's been looking a lot more flattering on me. I do have big cheeks. I've always had big cheeks. I, you should have seen me when I went skydiving. I wish I could insert a picture. If I could find one, I will. But my cheeks were like, it was not good. <laughs> I'll just say that. If you ever go skydiving, keep your mouth closed. <laughs> but anyway, it looks a lot better on me when I kind of blush more towards the back and carry it up rather than highlighting my already, you know, chubbier cheeks. I do find though, if you want to look a little more youthful, blushing right there definitely helps. And then I'm going to go in with the highlighter in the palette. This is like my favorite highlighter. I completely forgot about it for a while and then I started using this again and it's just freaking beautiful. So I'm taking my Anastasia A23 brush and I'm just going to highlight the tops of the cheekbones. Again, I'm not trying to go crazy here. I always blend it right into my eyebrow, which is why I like to wait to do my eyebrows. If I did my eyebrows first, that would pretty much screw them up since I like to set my brows up. So we're just kind of doing like a healthy little highlight. That is it as far as the base. So what I do next is I always go in and just spray my face to take off any kind of powdery look. So I love the NYX Bear With Me. This to me doesn't make my makeup like last, but it's really good at giving you kind of like a sheen and taking away any of that powder look. Don't do this while talking because it doesn't taste good. I said this in a recent video. I wanna know how much setting spray rather than lipstick I've ingested over the years. So I'm just gonna kind of let that dry down to take away any of the powdery look. Look at me, such an influencer. I got this in Chinatown a little while ago and I actually love it. I like this a lot better than using like a mechanical fan for some reason. I love when Patrick Ta goes in and sprays his highlight with a fan. Ugh, that to me is just like the most pleasing thing in the world. So I just let this dry and you can see I kind of have a little bit of sheen to my face again. It just takes away any of that powdery look, which you don't want. So at this point, I would go in and do my brows. So I use two brow products these days. I use the ColourPop Brow Boss in Taupe and I pretty much fill everything in to basically outline the brow and then I deepen the outer kind of like fourth and I kind of fade it in with the Maybelline Brow Ultra Slim in Medium Brow. This to me has just been the absolute perfect combination. I think my brows look better than ever. And then I'll go ahead and set that up with the Benefit 24 Hour Brow Set. I've been praying to the makeup gods to come out with a mini version of this and they finally did. Like my prayers have been answered with this. So this is $12 worth every single penny. It is like glue for your brows. I don't like anything better than that. So anyway, I'm just going to go in and fill in with taupe and then I'll deepen with medium brown. All right, brows are done. Are they perfect? Nope. Do I care? Nope. So let's go in and do the eyes. Now I do not do my eyes like all the time. It just kind of depends on the day. A lot of times I'll just kind of set it with powder. Good to go. But I do want to throw a little bit of something on there to give you guys an option for every day that works super well. So I have the Maybelline Color Tattoo in High Roller. This is such a good product. It goes on so fast. It blends out so easy and it lasts all day. So I'm just going to show you guys. I have the Sigma Practic Large Blend and I'm just going to lightly dip into the product here. This is like one of my favorite cream eyeshadows in the world. It's just so super easy and really pretty. And I'm just going to kind of work that right on the eye. So I'm going to work out those creases and I'm just going to blend starting in the center. And I'm just going to kind of work it onto the eye. I'm not worried about perfection here. I just want to have a little bit of color. You could even use your finger. I'll go ahead and do that on this eye and then even blend out those creases, but that's okay since we're going in with a cream shadow here. Place it right on the lid. Honestly, you don't really even need to blend the edges. If you start by really pressing it on the lid the most, I'm going to go ahead and do that, but it's just so easy. Ew, that was not cute how my eye is like flipping up like that but these are just so good having one cream shadow whatever brand it is in your collection 
to just be able to kind of throw something on the eye is an absolute must have in my opinion for every day. I'm also going to smoke that under the eye. This I don't know why I just went like that. It's cream shadow. It's like force of habit. But this is a BH Cosmetics number 10 brush. This has lasted with me or stayed with me rather since I was 16. I bought this at iMats in LA like back in the day when Corin Xander was still on here and like Elle. I forget her name like all that glitters or something like that. I, I can't remember but I bought this at that iMats and I still have it. And I always make sure to just kind of connect it right to the outer corner like that. Super simple, nothing crazy. We've just got a little bit of dimension going on. I'm taking that same brush, dipping back into the Chloe highlighter. I'm going to throw that on the inner corner just to brighten that area up. Even if I don't wear shadow, I always brighten my inner corner for an everyday look. It just makes you look a little more awake, which I appreciate. All right, I'm just going to go in and curl the lashes. This is just a random MAC lash curler. And I'm going to throw on my Thrive Cosmetics Liquid Lash Extension Mascara. I love to use that when I have nothing else going on. Very kind of everyday look. And I'll really kind of beef up the lashes. That mascara is amazing. I've talked about it a million times on my channel. I'm pretty sure I just got something on my lashes, but... That's okay, we're gonna ignore it. This stuff is so amazing. It really gives you length and volume with your lashes, it's amazing. I'm gonna do this off camera, but just take a look at my eyes right now and just wait, when I put this on, it's gonna look like I have lash extensions on. Are you kidding me with that? I haven't done this eye, obviously. Look at that length. I, every time I put this on, I'm like even more shocked at how beautiful it is. It is the best mascara in the world for length and volume, it's so pretty. I finished up the mascara, I took my hair down as well. It's been 45 minutes actually, so you could see how the makeup is wearing after 45 minutes. I had to jump on a quick conference call, but I love this mascara so much. It makes my eyes look huge, it makes my lashes look voluminous, it makes my lashes look long. You guys have to check that mascara out. I know it's expensive, but it is worth every penny if you have short little nub lashes like I do. I also went ahead and threw on a nude liner in my lower waterline. I love the Rimmel Scandalize in 005 Nude. This lasts all day on me and it's super brightening. So if you have hooded eyes like me, going in with a nude liner on your lower waterline is super helpful and it always makes you look awake. I also put a black liner on my upper waterline. I really like the Physicians Formula Glide On Gel Liner in Black Velvet. You can go in with a brown here as well. That's just personal preference. I think black just kind of makes my eyes pop a little bit more, but I do stop that right about here because I don't want it to like goop up in the inner corner throughout the day. I hate that look, so I try to avoid that, but do whatever works for you. I also added a touch more highlight just to kind of make that pop as well, but let's move on to the lips. I'm going to go in with MAC Whirl Lip Liner. I'm not going to line like super harsh here. I'm just going to kind of give my lips some shape and then I'm going to pop on some of my Believe Beauty, what color are you? Satin Crush Lipstick in Vintage Romance. Whirl is like one of the best lip liners. This is the first lip liner I need to talk and not put this on. This is the first lip liner I ever had in my kit because it works on so many skin tones. It's beautiful. So once that is on, I'll just kind of like dab the corner so it looks a little lived in. I don't want to like spread it, I just don't want a harsh line. And then I'll grab my Believe Beauty lipstick and I just kind of dab this on. And then you guys know I need a gloss. This is the L'Oreal Glowing Lip Gloss in Shall We Dance. I'm just going to pop that right here. Alright, so makeup is complete. If you wanted to add anything at this point, you'd want to do that before you went in and set. So if you wanted to touch up your bronzer, your highlight, your blush, anything you'd want to do, do that before you set it. I think I'm good to go right now. There's nothing I want to change. I'm happy with it. So I'm just going to grab my Scandinavia Makeup Finishing Spray. I think Scandinavia makes the absolute best setting sprays in the world. The bridal one is my absolute favorite. This is the bridal one. I just used up all of the, they send these little freebies and I used it all up and then I refilled it with my bridal setting spray because it lasts the best in the world. I'm pretty sure Scandinavia makes Urban Decay all nighter, but I think the Scandinavia bridal is the best. I've used that on my brides when I used to do makeup and they would 
like send me a email or a text or review me on like the knot or something like that and say that they woke up the next day and their makeup was still put so check it out if you haven't so I'm gonna do that off camera and then I'm gonna come back here and I'll show you up close and personal what my face looks like I just realized I had a piece of like everything bagel seasoning in my teeth for this entire video so that's really embarrassing but if you guys on the other hand don't know what the everything bagel seasoning is from Trader Joe's check that shit out it is so good I had it on my eggs this morning I love nothing more than everything bagels in the world with avocado and tomato and cream cheese oh my gosh my mouth could water right now but Sorry about that. I didn't know that was in my teeth until I got really up close and personal. So anyway, this is what the makeup looks like. It looks super pretty, super healthy. I have hair in my eyelash, but I really, really like this for every day. You just look really put together. You don't look overdone. Skin looks healthy. This is exactly the type of makeup that I go for on an everyday, and I really, really stand behind all of these products. A lot of them will be in my year-end like favorites video, so make sure to subscribe for that. I'm also gonna be posting a video probably next about my non makeup related favorites. So I just want to kind of change things up for you guys. And there have been a lot of like cozy winter things I've been loving that I'm going to share with you in that video soon. So again, make sure to subscribe and ring that bell for notifications because YouTube does not like to let you guys know when I post videos sometimes. And then also make sure to follow me on Instagram because I will always let you guys know when I post a new video on there first. And I also give you like sneak peeks of my favorites on my stories and my animals are all over my Instagram. So thank you so much for watching, you guys. If you have any questions, as always, please let me know below. Otherwise, if you're interested in seeing any more videos from me, please subscribe. It means the absolute world to me, and I hope to see you in the next one. Thanks again for watching. Bye-bye.